another frequently asked question is why are vegetables bad for us? So in the work that I do in the podcast and on social media, I've come to realize there are a number of themes that I'm talking about. These are probably the most important points in the work that I do, the most important ideas that I'm trying to understand, think about, evolve with, grow with myself, and then communicate to you all as best I can. Seed oils are harmful. High fructose corn syrup is harmful. Artificial sweeteners are harmful. And probably the least important one of those four, but still the, the four things that I think are harmful for humans are vegetables. The way to frame this in my mind is this. If you're thriving, don't worry about this. If you want to eat some onions or some garlic on your food, and you don't have an autoimmune disease, and it doesn't give you tons of gas or a rash or interrupt your sleep or make you smell like garlic and nobody wants to be around you too much, then fine, do it. It's okay. But I think that for those of us who have autoimmune diseases, I have eczema and psoriasis, or those of us who have sensitive guts, there is some validity to considering the wild notion that vegetables, the leaves, stems, roots, and seeds of plants contain defense chemicals, and they may not be helping us with our issues. And I have seen so many times, hopefully we'll get a formal study on this soon, but I've seen so many times, which is a lot of anecdote, admittedly, but I think when you have tons of anecdote, it's hard to ignore and you should start forming some hypotheses and moving on them or experimenting either yourself or doing your own research. I've seen so many times that people's autoimmune diseases, gut diseases, inflammatory bowel diseases, irritable bowel syndrome, even psychiatric illnesses get better when they get rid of vegetables. So I think there's something here. Does everyone need to get rid of all vegetables? Probably not. But I don't believe that vegetables are foundationally, fundamentally healthy for humans. I named this podcast Fundamental Health many years ago. I was at a gym in Seattle. Uh, shout out to Seattle Bouldering Project. And I was asking my friend, what should I name my podcast? Fundamental Health. And so I try to talk about things that I believe are fundamentally healthy in this podcast and things that I don't believe are fundamentally healthy. And I think historically vegetables, the leaves, the stems, the roots and seeds of plants were survival food at best. Yeah, we ate them. Yeah, hunter gatherers eat them a little bit today, but really only when they're starving. Go visit the Hadza. <laughs> they do not eat 150 grams of fiber per day. They want honey and they want meat and they want berries. If they're absolutely starving, they might eat some pumpkin leaves. They do eat tubers from time to time, but the men are sort of not that excited about them. I went digging the tubers with the women. The men came along, but the, the men wanted nothing to do with these tubers. They didn't really care about the tubers. The men love honey. They love berries. They love eating meat from animals. This pattern we see over and over in hunter-gatherer tribes, which is our best approximation of where we've come from as humans. Vegetables are survival food at best, but we've elevated them to the pantheon, to the pinnacle of the pantheon, and said that they are the, the most powerful God. And that's just bullshit in my opinion. Vegetables are survival food. They're not great for all humans. And I don't believe there are any key or important nutrients that you can't get in more bioavailable forms in higher quantities in, in meat and organs and fruit and honey and raw dairy in an animal-based diet. Sure, you want to get some fruit for some vitamin C, great. And there are some fruits that we think of as vegetables, squash, avocado, et cetera, that people get confused about. But understand that when you're thinking about fruit, there's a lot of plant foods that you can eat. And when you're thinking about vegetables, a lot of things we think of as healthy are not so great for humans. Yeah, I'm not a fan of spinach. Look at my Instagram, see the reel I've done on oxalates. And how many oxalates are in spinach? A ton. These can contribute to kidney stones and other issues. Look at turmeric, tons of oxalates in turmeric. There are so many foods, almonds, that have lots of oxalates. These can accumulate in joints, cause kidney stones, not great for humans. Lectins, carbohydrate binding proteins found in things like beans and grains strongly appear to cause issues in the human gut. Gluten is a lectin. It is perhaps the canonical lectin that causes inflammation in the human gut, leading to regression of the small intestinal villi and the autoimmune disease known as celiac. And there is a growing awareness of the fact that some people who are not technically celiac also have pretty bad negative autoimmune reactions to gluten in wheat, in uh, barley, in triticale, in glutinous grains. These are not healthy for humans. Even non-glutinous grains, I think, are not great for humans. We know that rice contains arsenic and heavy metals. We know that oats are very high in phytic acid, a nutrient that can chelate minerals and prevent the absorption of them in the human body. There are much better ways to get carbohydrates in your diet. As I've mentioned, fruit, honey, raw dairy, maple syrup, et cetera. Vegetables, even leafy greens like kale. Kale's bullshit. You guys have seen me with that t-shirt or that hat. 
I don't think it's great for humans. It contains compounds of the family from isothiocyanates that will inhibit the absorption of iodine at the level of the thyroid. And though kale is perhaps not the most concentrated source of isothiocyanates, things like Brussels sprouts, chard, et cetera, these have been shown to contain meaningful amounts of isothiocyanates that can significantly impair thyroid function in the amounts we consume them in the human diet. I've shown that study multiple times in the past. So the leaves of plants are not something that plants want us to eat, and they contain defense chemicals. People are variably sensitive to these. And I think that, again, if you're cooking the crap out of your vegetables and you really just want to eat them to be happy, do it. Knock yourself out. But for those of you who are suffering, consider eliminating vegetables from your diet and see if you do better. When you get rid of the vegetables, when you get rid of the grains, the leaves, the stems, the roots, the seeds, include organs, include meat, include fruit, fruit juice, honey, maple syrup, raw milk, whatever works for you, raw dairy, and you will thrive. That's an animal-based diet. That's the whole shift that I am hoping to challenge people to make. I don't think that's the ideal diet for everyone. That's perhaps too restrictive for some people, but I think that diet is a really great starting point for people and includes enough to make it interesting. It includes all the nutrients you need to thrive. That is unquestionable. I've done chronometer on my daily diet, on animal-based diets multiple times and shown that on my podcast and YouTube that everything on a chronometer at least is, is in adequate amounts, is in spades in my diet. And I would challenge anyone to show me any nutrients that are deficient in my diet. And um, oftentimes when people have tried to make the challenge, it's just that the USDA database doesn't actually include those nutrients in the foods that I'm eating. For instance, uh, the USDA database doesn't even look at vitamin K2 so it might say that the diet that I'm eating is deficient in vitamin K, but that's an absurdity <laughs> because we know there's a lot of vitamin K2 and things like liver in, even in muscle meat, in egg yolks, in animal fats. These are very rich sources of this in my diet. So I believe that vegetables are not great for humans. They're highly defended. These are the parts plants don't want us to eat in contrast to their fruit, which is sweet and colorful, and that it contains defense chemicals, which are not great for all people. Some people tolerate don't seem to have major problems with it. But for those of you who do understand that there are now thousands, tens of thousands of people who have found significant improvement in the face of incredulity from their providers, their family, doctors, that eliminating vegetables and focusing on meat and organs, fruit, et cetera, has led to massive improvements in their health. So that is what I hope for all of you to take away from this. But again, it's, it's my intention that you become curious, you question everything I'm saying and do your own research.